Hey everyone, it's Brittany with Tennessee National Wildlife Refuge. And today I'm gonna to be talking with you about one of the most incredible things about hummingbirds. And it's the story of their migration. So there's actually this myth that they ride on the backs of geese or they'll hitch a ride on an airplane. Of course, none of that's true. These guys make the journey all on their own with their two little bitty wings. And so here we have a map that shows the range of the ruby-throated hummingbird. And the area that's in red is their breeding grounds, and the green area is where their wintering grounds are, which is in the Yucatan Peninsula down and into Central America. And their wintering grounds is where they're going to spend all winter long just feeding and growing new flight feathers and just preparing for the trip back up into the United States in the springtime. And they know when it's time to migrate north because their hormones are actually triggered by the lengthening of the daylight hours. So that tells them it's time to go. Um, and when they're making this long flight back up to the United States, they actually fly across the Gulf of Mexico, which is an incredible feat because that's an over 500 mile nonstop journey, which takes on average 20 hours to complete. So basically once they launch, that's it. There's no going back. They've got to make that whole journey, that whole 500 miles across the Gulf of Mexico. And from banding research, um, we've seen that these birds are super faithful to their breeding and feeding grounds. And so if they nested up in southern Canada or Minnesota, maybe New York, then they have another thousand miles to fly once they reach the coast. And the males are going to be the first ones to get there because they're going to be the ones that are establishing a breeding territory. And then the females are not too far behind. Uh, during mid-July to September, these hummers are extremely busy packing on the fat. And they do this because the fat is the fuel that they're going to need in order to make the long journey southwards. And that's why right now the hummingbirds are going crazy around the feeders. It's all about the food. And so hummingbirds actually have to double their weight. And so they're packing on the grams in order to make that southward bound journey. But they don't normally carry this fat um, because it's just typically an extra weight that they don't need during the summer months. Um, but when it's time to, uh, to go, that's when they know it's time to pack on that fat. And usually by November 1st, the, most of the hummingbirds have left the United States. Um, but with the warmer falls we're having, um, we're starting to see that the birds are staying a little bit longer. Uh, we also know from, from banding research um, that some of our mature birds actually aren't flying across the Gulf of Mexico. Instead, they're taking the land route and following the coast down into the Yucatan Peninsula. And uh, we know this because birds that have been banded here in Tennessee have been caught uh, by other banders along the coast. And so that's what's showing us um, this unique migration route that they've started to take. Um, so I hope you've learned a lot about migration. And if you have any questions about migration or anything else in general, uh, just drop a comment in the video and we'll make sure that that gets answered um, in our interview with our hummingbird bandy, Cindy Rutledge. So thanks for taking the time to listen. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you look forward to the rest of the, video the videos that are going to be released today.